Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jake from today's iPhone.com. Uh, right off the bat, I just want to apologize if the audio in this video is a bit weird. Uh, my room air conditioning slash heater is so unbelievably loud. So I've been looking for ways to fix it. So I'm trying out this new microphone. Uh, hopefully it fixes the problem and doesn't make it worse, but you know, it might. <laughs> anyway, the news this week is coming to you in three parts. First part, what is the first part? First part, jailbreaking. First and foremost, the untethered jailbreak for iOS 5.0.1 for the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2 is officially out. We've been talking about this jailbreak forever and it's taken a long time to get it actually out into the public because of issues with the A5 processor and with Apple updating the software and whatnot. But I'm very happy to say that it is finally out. So if you want to set your iPhone 4S or iPad 2 free, head over to greenpoison.com or check out the post on today's iPhone link in the description. Matt also put together a how-to video on how exactly to do this to your iPhone 4S or iPad 2. So definitely check that out if you're not quite sure about the process. And now we're going to change pace a little bit from jailbreaking the newest devices to jailbreaking the oldest devices. As you're probably aware, there comes a point in every iDevice's life when Apple stops supporting it with official software updates and stuff. And as such, there are a bunch of older iPod touches and iPhones and stuff stuck on iOS 3.1.3, which unfortunately means that owners of those devices can't partake in all of the iOS 5 fun. Or so you thought. The newest version of White Door was released recently, and it basically brings a lot of the iOS 5 specific features to jailbroken devices running iOS 3.1.3. Now, of course, this isn't a perfect fix, and uh, there could be some lagging issues, although it's reportedly been pretty fast. Uh, but this hack will bring stuff like folders, uh, personalized home screen backgrounds, and iCloud-like service that uses Dropbox, and a lot of the other awesome iOS 5 features to your iOS 3.1.3 device. But there is no notification center, which kind of sucks and there's really no word on how secure this is but this is definitely a great option for people not really willing to upgrade their device but still wanting some of the newest features now of course all this jailbreak news is provided for informational purposes only and today's iphone does not accept any responsibility for anything that might or could or possibly maybe go wrong with your device if you do jailbreak that being said i wish you luck in your hacking endeavors and we move on to part two and part two is funnily enough iBooks too, and textbooks. Apple held its education event in New York City this week, and they announced iBooks 2, textbooks, iBooks author, and we have a ton of, ton of coverage of all this stuff on the site, from videos to articles to opinion pieces. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now, but I will let you know that iBooks 2, the interface and stuff is basically the same, but textbooks is totally new. Apple partnered with a bunch of the major textbook brands like Pearson and McGraw-Hill, to bring these totally new digital interactive textbooks to iBooks and iPad. They have video, they have 3D models, they have pictures, they have multi-touch gestures. It's all really cool. It's definitely a new way to interact with technology. Probably will help students, but also it does have some downsides. I talked about that in Social Saturday. Um, the links to all of the news, all of the videos, and all of the articles are down there below. Um, I did a hands-on video if you want some more in-depth look at the interface. Uh, the one thing I will say now, and I've said it before, is iBooks 2 and textbooks are a great educational tool for students and teachers and school districts and stuff, but it's really only the beginning. This alone will not really revolutionize education. Any changes that will come from iBooks 2 and textbooks is going to be a direct result of the way students, teachers, parents, and school districts implement and use this awesome tool that Apple has given them in the most educationally beneficial and economically sound way. So I'm confident that iTextbooks will help, but uh, there's really no way of knowing just yet. We gotta see it in action, see how the teachers work with it, and all that fun stuff. And finally, part three is iPad 3. I didn't even mean to do that one. Shaw Wu, an analyst at Stern Agi, or Stern Agi, or Stern Agi, and God, I'm bad with names. Uh, well, yeah, that guy said that the iPad 3 will hit store shelves in March of this year and it will be a significant update to the previous model. He didn't go into too much detail, but he did say that the iPad 3 will be rocking the Retina display and feature Siri, which is awesome. And as Wu says, it's the release of the iPad 3 that will boost iPad sales to at least 48 million units this year, which would be an all-time record for the company. Now, of course, all of this is speculation right now, but in the files for iBooks 2, uh, developers were looking around and they found some images that are double the resolution that the iPad can support which is leading a lot of people to believe that the next iPad will in fact have a retina display because you know 
iBook Student textbooks are really designed to be read on an iPad, and there really wouldn't be any other reason for Apple to include these higher resolution photos if a display wasn't going to take advantage of them. That being said, uh, similar high resolution photos appeared before the iPad 2 was released, and as we all know, that does not have a retina display, so neither of these are guarantees, but they are steps in the right direction, maybe? for an iPad 3 with a retina display. Now really, only time will tell, but hopefully time tells us what we want to hear. Okay, well that's all the big news for this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, before I go, I want to leave you with a question of the day, and that is, what do you think of textbooks and iBooks too? Is this something that's viable in real school situations, or is it more of a, you know, study on your own thing, or maybe a supplement to the paper textbooks already out there. I'd really love to hear your opinions on this because a lot of the stuff I've read is claiming that this is going to revolutionize education and change the way students learn and stuff, and I haven't really heard that much negative about it, and I, I want to know if that's just the, you know, the media, the bloggers and stuff that feel the way, or if it's everybody. So let me know down in the comment section below, or you can let me know on Twitter at TIP underscore Jake. I try to answer everybody that tweets me, so if you have something to say to me, that's the best place to do it. If you're interested, the links to everything I talked about in this video are in the description down below. And uh, for more news, views, and reviews, definitely check out todaysiphone.com.